I want to assure you the day you prayed it was delivered. But you need to enter into the spiritual realm. The king has not forgotten you. The Bible says he has engraved my name on the palm of his heart. Man can cry with you, man can walk with you, but no man will ever walk you out of your pain. But there is one man that can walk you out of your pain. And he said, I came so that the broken hearted can be healed. He deals with emotional issues. And the Bible says, they were there to comfort him. And it, it, it was the culture. It's more like the Muslim today. You die and you're buried immediately. So the comforting process used to happen later. Let us continue. Now mother, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Uh -huh. Now mother said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother will not have died. I want to say something. Many a times that we look at issues and we say, if God, if only you are here, this thing will not have happened. If only you are here, this thing will not have happened. And sometimes we raise an attitude of complaint. But when I was looking at that scripture, I realized when they were calling him, when he was sick, they had the faith that he would heal him. But when he died, they did not know that he he was the resurrection power. <laughs> okay, so I'm tempted to go there, but I'll go there when you're finishing. But even when I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Now, I want you to see what she's saying. This one looks like a statement of faith. That I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And then she says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now see how her answers are confused. Mother said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She knew the scripture, but she did not have the resurrection of that day. She had the, the, the revelation of the last day. She had the revelation of a time that did not belong to her. But God wanted to bring the revelation of her time. And that is why she said, whatever you ask God, I know God will do. Have you ever been religious in some cases that when people ask you, you come up religiously and say, I know God will make a way, but you don't believe in your heart. <laughs> that was the conversation with Jesus. Because look at the next statement. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am not talking about the future. I am talking about today and life. He, will, he, he, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Ha. Uh, 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Now, I'm not talking about the future. I am talking about now. I know in the future, when I come for the church, that is according to Isaiah, the day of the Lord, the dead will arise, them that died in Christ. But this disease was not unto death. <laughs> uh, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Now, she's not talking even about the second coming. She's talking about the first coming. Look at how messed up these answers are. Jesus is asking, do you believe that I am the resurrection? Then she says, I know you are Jesus. I know you are the Messiah. Have you ever gotten a, a, a spiritual with a conversation, but you don't want to buy what they are telling you because he knew there is no faith that this thing can be sorted out. She started telling Jesus who he was while Jesus was telling him what he can do. <laughs> so meaning that it was nothing but a statement of faith. Let's continue. And when she had, she had these things, she went her way and secretly called mother, her sister. Now, Aliona, who Jesus at Saidiani, you don't understand my situation. We are talking about a dead man. 
and you're telling me about the resurrection. I know you came as a man to comfort us because you love us. And these are good words from a man that indeed he will resurrect. Uh, you know, sometimes people tell us things and we know them. Oh, God will make a way where there is no way. And you're like, I know. But now, what will I do? You may nafungwa Buddha. Usiniambia is the God of impossibility. There is future now, now, Sai. What should I do? And, you know, he treated Jesus like another mona and another audience that came to comfort them and tell them about the future. And he said, I know you're the Christ. These are good revelations. Now, let me disappear and call he that worships you. Her sister saying, this teacher, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Even the attitude shows now, this guy is coming to teach me on resurrection. We were calling him as a healer. Now he comes as a teacher. He cannot help us. <laughs> and when she, uh, as soon as she had, she arose quickly and came to him. Look at her position. She arose quickly and came to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where mother met him. Uh -huh. Then, the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. It's normal. Uh -huh. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now again she comes with the same faith. God, if you're only here, my brother will not have died. But this time in a different position. But the position does not change what he had come to do. <laughs> now listen. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Now listen, the spirit is small s. It was the man Jesus who got, who was messed up. Are you getting it? And it is him who was messed up. Again in this house, he reveals his two nature. He's both God and he's both man. I'll show you, there's a scripture here where Jesus wept. Eh? Let's continue. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And they thought, this is another art of paying tribute to the dead. You are not here for the burial ceremony, so you are here to just pay tribute. He is dead in there. So let come, let us show you where we buried him. <laughs> now listen, Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the scripture. The man part of God is now revealed. Where is it revealed? In the place where he served and is worshipped. <laughs> hey, let us continue. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Now again, there is an external acclamation of his love. Let us continue. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Oh my God. I just love how we get used to the blessings and the things of God. And I just love how we relate with God with what he did yesterday. But we cannot relate with him with what he's about to do today. That is why he says, if I did it yesterday, I'm going to do today. Meaning that my yesterday issue is not my today issue. But I need my yesterday faith to sort my today issue. Yesterday he opened the eyes of the blind but today there is a dead man. If I have the faith of the blind eyes, I will have the faith of the resurrection. And so God was doing something. He was orchestrating something in this particular place. They were used to him in one level. They knew him as the Lord that could heal their diseases. But he was saying, this is my friend. I need to reveal a part of me that no one knows about then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone lay against it Jesus said take away the stone mother the sister of him who was dead said to him Lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead for four days Amen. but listen he knows the situation he, he, he knows, he's the creator. 
He knows I created decomposing bodies. He knows after four days it's rotting already. So you don't need, but all I need, give me an environment of faith. Just give me an environment of faith. Because you cannot see unless something in you is conceived. I don't just work miracles. We are co-workers in the kingdom. What is your role? Your role is to roll away the stone. Why am I rolling away the stone? I'm expressing my faith that Yahweh, this is my mess. You can walk in and change it. But there are so many people in church who have filled their tomb and they want to look like everything is okay. And Jesus is saying tonight, take away the stone. I know how messed up it is, but take away the stone. I want to intervene because this will not be solved by men. This will not be solved by another counseling session. This needs the resurrection power. And he that is here is the resurrection power. Take away the stone. He will not do it for you. By taking away the stone is a projection of faith that you believe he has the power to deal with the mess. Don't stay rotten. Yes, don't stay stinking. There is he that can give life to dead things. When I'm speaking like this, I'm speaking in threefold. I'm speaking to guys whose lives are in chaos. You don't understand where you're heading. You feel like you died and you are buried long time ago. You hate your life. Yes, one day you used to be in ministry. You used to be vibrant. But the fire is not there. I came to call you out of the tomb. It is not yet over. I'm happy it is men who sealed the tomb. But I'm happy God is saying it is not yet over. I'm also talking to two, to another set of people who decided to bury their visions, who decided to bury their identity, who had big dreams, but right now they took it and said, oh my God, there is nothing that seems to come up. They threw the vision away. And today I came to tell you, Jesus is saying, take away the stone. I didn't allow you to dream what I cannot accomplish. Your work was just to dream. Mine is to fulfill. I work, then you receive the glory. Are we together? So don't hinder me. I'm about to reveal a nature in me that you have never experienced. Just allow me to take away your hindrances. I don't know what it is. It could be what men have told you. It could be the statement, the reality of men. Yes, take away the stone. Because I want to interact with your mess. I am the resurrection. I give life where there is death. I I give life where there is no hope. I breathe life where things didn't seem to exist. Allow me in. Don't give me excuses. And so now, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, now look at the prayer that he's making. Listen. Father, I thank you that not you will hear me. You have heard me. He also prayed from another dimension of faith. Oh my God. Listen now, this time he's coming as God. And he's releasing some form of power. Then listen what he says. And I know that you always hear me. You have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. Meaning that whatever I'm about to say now, you will hear it and you have already heard it. I am not speaking from a dimension of the earthly realm. I have entered eternity in the dimension of godly realm. And I'm commanding what is in earthly realm to align with what is in eternal realm. You always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you send me. Your situation is a confirmation that there is a God in heaven. One day they will look at your life and say, let the God of so and so be worshipped. Because indeed we have seen that God in her life and in his life. Listen to what he says. Now. When he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Let me get my material. Let me get my material. I want to show you something. Prof, come here. 
I want to demonstrate something. What did he do? He called for the Lazarus. Are we together? And tonight I'm calling people out of the graveyard. I don't care how many days you've been in that tomb. I came to call you out in the name of Jesus. It is not over yet. I came to call you out. I came to declare that you are here for a reason. You are here. There is an assignment upon your life. Let them seal your tomb. But roll away the stone. Come out young lady. Come out young man. It is not over yet. The one that gives life. The one that breathes life. He's here tonight. And he's saying come out let our vision come out let our dream come out let it come out you don't need an experience just come out he cried with a loud voice come forth let's continue and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes now just come here Monday I want you to show, I want to show you something. This is how, just put your hands inside. Go that other side, Monday, because I want to show you something. This is how they used to bind the dead. But this is not exactly, but something close to this. Are you getting this? Now, he's bound hands and feet. They used to bind from the head and they used to bind everywhere. Now I want you to see the revelation. The man, he is alive, but he cannot do anything for himself. Ah, there are people who feel like, yes, I'm not in the grave, Mr. T. I got born again. My life is not stinking, but somehow you are out of the grave, but you cannot move. You are tied hands and legs. You cannot do anything for yourself. And sometimes the devil is not afraid that you are alive he is afraid when the grave clothes fall off for of your life because suddenly you become emotional your hands can do something your legs can do something you can walk and possess you can touch and possess now let me tell you there are many alive young men who are still bound in their clothes attires they are still bound they still think they are not the best they still think they cannot do it they still think because I failed and things died I cannot move. Yes, we see like you're vibrant and alive, but nothing is working for you. Now listen what the Bible says. He said his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, lose him and let him go. I came with a prophetic mandate tonight. I came to lose on somebody's life. I came to release the grave clothes. I came to let the man go because the world is waiting for the man. The world is waiting for the man. He has to be free from death and he has to be free from the grave clothes. He has to be free from the grave clothes. What are the grave clothes? The things you identify with. All the parts of life, the failures of the past, the mistakes of your past. But I came to tell you, take away the grave clothes. Throw them away. We serve a God of another chance. Chapter 12 of your life has just been opened right up believe that you're not a dead man walking you have the resurrection power you have the life of God right now in the spiritual environment I am commanding every dead vision to arise I am commanding every dead young man to arise I am commanding every person feeling like their past identifies them you are frustrated you have made mistakes you have been buried take away the grave clothes because there is something he wants to do with you let me show you what he wants to do with you John chapter number 12 verse 1 oh my god let me tell you the truth this was the greatest miracle he was the first man that received the resurrection power before Jesus tested the grave even the apostles did not receive this dimension. They received the Holy Ghost. But this one received the resurrection power. Before he tested the grave. The six days before Passover. Jesus came to Bethany. 
where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. What were they doing there? What were they doing there? Oh, somebody look at this, look at this. There they made him supper and mother sup. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. I came to tell you, Jesus wants to dine with you. He wants to dine with you. But he cannot dine with you in the grave. He cannot dine with you when you have your grave attire. He wants a free man. Now look who's serving. It is mother again, not Mary. Look who's serving this time. Look who's serving this time. It is mother. Look where Jesus is. Fellowshipping with a friend and his name is Lazarus. I came to remind you he's missing you. Jesus is missing you. He misses the days that you had fellowship together. He misses the days that you used to dine together. He misses the days when you are busy for him. He misses the days when you are not in the grave. When he will pass by Bethany and find you and talk to you. He misses those days. And I came to call somebody out. This is your day. Chapter 12 has been opened. You are going to dine with the king again. You are going to dine with him again. The former things are gone. But now I declare now everything that limited you right now. I rebuke it in your life. I set you free in the spiritual realm. I declare tonight the real you is coming out. The real you is coming out. We are out of the grave. We are out of the grave. No more grave clothes. I came to cancel guilt tonight. Some of you cannot move. Some of you are so wounded. They cannot not even see the future. Their eyes are bound. They cannot see anything. Yes, we are breathing, but we can't see anything. Our hands are tied. The Bible says he shall bless the works of my hands. I have nothing to lay my hands upon. Oh, my vision is affected. My confession is affected. My motion is also affected. I'm just here. I know who I'm supposed to be, but I've never been who I'm supposed to be. Anytime I want to walk out, men remind me of my grave clothes. But tonight I have a revelation. Chapter 12 cannot begin unless I take away the grave clothes he's about to die and resurrect for real but you know what I have tasted his power before he tasted the grave oh my god I have tasted what men will be waiting for Pentecost. Why? I'm a friend of Jesus. I don't operate with the timetable of men. What men are waiting for, I've already tested because he reveals himself to his friends. Next time, church, a situation comes your way, don't complain. Enter into the prayer closet and ask him, Master, what do you want to do this time? Because last time I was in the grave, he released a result resurrection power what is it that you want to do with me now start praising him in the storm start shouting in the midst of your calamity why he's about to do something he's about to reveal himself in a new way the bible says when they pushed him to the wall when he was on that mountain calvary he was hanging there oh he started saying eloi eloi elama sabbatikani my lord my lord why have thou forsaken me then the bible says uh, suddenly virtue power left him i came to tell you somebody when we are pushed to the wall that is the time to release power the devil doesn't know who he's messing with he's messing with powerhouses when we are pushed to the wall we release power we explode into power we become powerhouses don't complain for what that is pushing you I came to tell you you are like a time bomb you are about to explode the devil doesn't know what he's messing up with he did not cry to his mother he did not say my mom why have thou forsaken me I don't know why but most of the times when we are so much frustrated we run to God the devil thought he will have us by frustrating us. But I found myself praying even more. I don't know who I'm talking to. Sometimes you're pushed to the wall. But you don't even cry. 
you find yourself coming for gathering of champions. Oh my God, you're not smiling. Things are not okay. But the devil doesn't know that when he pushes you, you have nowhere to turn. And like Jesus, even your words cannot be interpreted. They have to be written in the original Hebrew word. Eloi, Eloi, Elama Sabbatikani. Because they are so heavy. They carry an original cry. Oh, Psalms prophesied about it. Oh my Lord, I don't know who has ever felt forsaken in his life. But I came to remind you, we have no where to cry to. Our parents have failed us. The government has failed us. We are crying to the right source because the Bible says suddenly power was released. I came to tell you your cry has reached the heavens. What will come out of you is a divine enablance or to go to the next dimension. When power came out of him let me tell you what happened. He went to heads. He preached to the devil. He That devil did not have any power because the only weapon he had was death and he took the sting of death on Calvary he went to the devil and told him you cannot do anything your kingdom has nothing he preached in hell and the bible says on the third day the resurrection power the spirit of resurrection raised him from the dead the graves could not hold him there was no man to draw away the stone because you cannot contain the resurrection in the tomb in the days of Lazarus the resurrection came to the tomb but in the days of Jesus the resurrection came from the tomb yeah. and the Bible says that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that spirit abides in you I don't know who is in the tomb I came to tell you like the days of Jesus we are coming from the tomb it cannot contain us we are too loaded to stay there we are too loaded to stay dead we are too loaded to stay frustrated we are anointed we are so loaded the resurrection power come on rise up on your knees right now start declaring that power I want to hear people in the church provoke that anointing in your life now declare the resurrection power oh everything that is dead in you the prayer warriors are rising again the intercessors are rising again the vibrancy of it in the world the resurrection power wherever you went wrong tonight there is a revival in your inner man in the spirit man there is a revival let there be an awakening I declare revival let there be an awakening let the giants rise let the champions rise I say rise I say rise you've been there for long rise now rise now rise. Thank you very much for always watching the gathering of champions. We believe that if we are ready for your crown, we must be ready for your diapers. And we know that champions are not born, but champions are made. I also want to invite you every Thursday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. in the CBD Nairobi for the gathering of champions in Kenya Cinema. Invite a friend and also for our monthly Kesha every third Friday of the month where we pray because we know we stand tall on our knees. May God bless you. May, may God increase you. We are the radical remnants. Truth movement. God bless you.